back to the news of 10. Let's cross over to Abuja now. Here's Makwe Hogan. Hey, Makwe. Hello, Ijeoma. It's good Hi. to see you. you. The Senate Committee on Banking and Finance has commenced the process of confirming the nominees of President Muhammadu Buhari for the positions of Deputy Governors and members of the Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Last week, the Senate decided to reverse its earlier decision not to confirm any nominee from the President and gave the committee one week to consider the requests of the President. The nominees were led to the screening by Senior Special Assistant to the President on National Assembly Matters, Senator Ita Enang. The members of the board, not all of them are members of the Monetary Policy Committee, but two of them are members of the Monetary Policy Committee, that they should also uh, uh, extend the same grace to the members of the board of the Central Bank. You can observe that those who are cleared screened now are the two deputy governors, the four nominees of, for the Monetary Policy Committee, and just that, the members of the board are not screened. I know the Senate in its magnanimity will extend that and then go up to clear other nominees. The time we have for legislative work is not real much again. I also want to appreciate the committee because the committee also has shown a lot of dexterity in the work. They took a lot of time. They studied the, uh, the credentials and the CV of all the uh, nominees and ask questions relevant to it and the nominees have also acquitted themselves properly away from the national assembly the minister of power works and housing wants motorists to stop the abuse of road infrastructure in the country mr babatunde fashola made the call during a one-day public enlightenment forum on developments in the road sector held in abuja our correspondent kayla megwa reports The issue of abuse of road infrastructure was the main thrust at the one-day public enlightenment forum on the developments in the road sector organized by the Ministry of Power, Works and Housing. President Mohamed Buhari, represented by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Mr. Boss Mustafa, noted that engaging unions in policy formulation is important to achieve the purpose for which such policies are made. Oftentimes, Unions are combative. They don't see eye to eye with government policies. And I think what has been lacking in the past is not getting their buy-in before the policies are formulated. The Minister of Power, Works and Housing reminded transporters that there are treaty obligations within the West African subregion and beyond that regulate the amount of load any goods vehicle can put on an axle and by extension on the road in order to do business within ECOWAS and beyond. We have imposed very high penalties and as I said in the documentary, there is profit in overloading and so we want to take out that profit. Some of the major issues discussed at the interactive session were the prioritized projects for 2019, highways in critical conditions, major bridge projects such as the local Oweto Bridge and the second Niger Bridge. We are now working at the back end to provide a common communication platform for transparency so that you can buy and pay for your toll leader from your phone or from your scratch card or from contact card. And so on. A total of 1,466 Nigerians were killed in the road traffic crashes recorded in the first quarter of 2017. The expense and cost to all of us when the road is damaged by misuse or abuse manifest in longer travel hours, more fuel consumption, expensive delivery of goods and services, which every member of the community, including transporters, have to bear. The minister argued that this is not what the country needs, adding that the process to change the situation has begun with the construction of roads, but stressed that it will not be complete unless Nigerians embrace change. Kayla Megwa, Channel Television News. Why change a winning team? That seems to be the viewpoint of Anambra State Governor Willie Obiano, who is formally announcing some members of the State Executive Council. Governor Obiano, who was inaugurated for another four-year term over the weekend, is retaining four officers from his previous cabinet. They include the Secretary to the State Government, Solo Chukulobelu, and Principal Secretary, Willie Wonkoye, who are retaining their positions. 
I would like you to give it your best. It's an assignment that um, will require a lot of uh, hard work and uh, integrity. Emphasis on that. So I will expect yourselves to to live up to board. I will not hesitate to do the default if I think you guys are not living to expectation. So I um, I expect you guys uh, to do well, and I'm very confident that uh, you all going to do well. Thank you. A Governor Wille Obiano of Anambra State. Well, that's all from Abuja. It's back to you, Ejoma. All right, thanks a lot, Mark. Where? The group managing director, Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation, Mr. Mikanti Baru, has emerged the news direct man of the year. The recognition award and public lecture are part of activities for the annual news direct event, the seventh in its series. <laughs> When they set out some years back, they had clarity of purpose, launching out as News Direct, a daily newspaper publication striving always to be the voice of business and helping readers with adequate news that would guide decision making. Today, News Direct is holding its seventh anniversary lectures and Man of the Year awards. It's also recognized the conditions of good Nigerians making the economy to grow. Two parts of the event. Dr. Fawikwe, a voice in the oil and gas industry, speaks to the theme infrastructure, security, revenue, diversification, and its connection to energy supply and foreign exchange earnings. Now, given the problem we are having with our refineries, should it we go back and use the old wisdom to get our refineries to operate? The model we are using now may not be sustainable in the long term. That position gets a quick response from Mr. McKenzie Barrow. The proposal by our eminent lecturer of making our refinery stolen plants is actually part of the program we have for funding the rehabilitation of the refineries. Because with the government's pockets being very tight, we're actually raising finances to fund the rehabilitation of nations and families. This effectively makes the path for the awards, where the National Oil GMD emerges the man of the year for several positives, including opening up the exploration of the country's inland basins. 2018 man of the year. Celebrate him. Other recipients are Mr. Godwin Emefiele, CBN Governor, Chief Executive Officer of the Year, Babatunde Raji Fashala, Minister of the Year and Public Servant, Dr. Aboyadun, Petroleum Downstream CEO of the Year. This is not a singular effort of mine. It is a collective effort of the entire heading group. Particularly the heading staff that you do not know, the ones that work at the depot, the tanker drivers, the workers at the petrol stations, and all of us that make it possible. Those we honored, individuals we honored, organizations that we honor, uh, they perform excellently in various fields. The management of News Direct is optimistic that the recognition is poor all the Nigerians to diligence at work. Just a few hours to the 4th Ogun State Investors Forum and the state government has finalized agreements with the internet service provider Main One to ease connectivity for existing and potential investors in the state. The Secretary to the State Government, Mr. Taiwo Adolua, says the agreement is expected to accelerate technology infrastructure, boost the gross domestic product indices, and also impact on the entire business district. The Chief Finance Officer of Main One, Mr. Babatunde Dada, explains that the partnership is for a 250-kilometer fiber optic network across the state capital and other parts of the state. Without any doubt, uh, I think Ogun State and Nigeria in general would benefit tremendously from this association. As the essay said, we are building, we are, like, we are going to build a data center at the Chagamu intersection. Now, what does that do for the connectivity that we are trying to put within Ogun State? It will attract even more businesses. You already said three banks are on location at the CBD, and five, I think five have signed or something. Now, there is nothing that says that this place will not become the hub of the back room of almost every bank that operates out of Lagos. 
today. And because of the data center that will be, I don't know, 20, 30 kilometers away from here, latency will reduce very significantly. Let's take a look at some business news now. Here's Kayode Okikiolu. Thank you, Gemma, and welcome to Business News. The World Bank has commenced preparations for about half a billion dollars electricity distribution improvement project in Nigeria after concluding on how to help boost service delivery by the electricity distributors. This comes amid fears after the country's power sector recovery program implementation monitoring team recently met with officials of the Central Bank of Nigeria, the Federal Ministry of Finance, Adrian Bork Electricity Trading Company and World Bank representatives for the financial arrangements and implementation of the program. The Nigeria Electricity Transmission Access Project, as it is known, recently got approval for $486 million from the World Bank and is part of the financial support aimed at achieving a viable power sector. And Kenya's central bank today caught its benchmark interest rate for the first time since September 2016, raising concerns that a government cap on commercial lending rates recently introduced will soon be modified or removed. The 50 basis points cut in lending rates to 9.5% took much of the market by surprise. Our chief economist for Africa at Standard Chartered in London, Razia Khan, who had also forecast a 50 basis point cut, said it was likely to spur the loan market. Kenya Central Bank's MPC says the country's inflation outlook is benign, as year-on-year -year inflation rates stood at 4.5% in February well within the government's preferred gap of 2.5 to 7.5 percent. And Nigeria's stock market sheds 32 billion naira today as equities maintain a negative posture despite improved audited earnings result from some quartet bellwether companies. Tenil Ashubo-Ali tells us more. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. Total value of listed equities on the Nigerian Stock Exchange fell below the 15 trillion naira mark following renewed profit taken by investors, setting off another negative start for the week. The sell-off in Monday session hit blue-chip equities across the insurance, consumer goods and the oil and gas sector, pushing the all-share index down by a quarter of a percent, further below the 42,000 level. Cadbury emerged the top losers after 35 price decliners after reporting a mixed performance in its 2017 full-year financial results, while CNI Leasing emerged as the highest gainer out of 14 advances. Zenit Bank retains the lead position on the activity chart with over 128.97 million units, while total volume of shares traded for the day stands at 327.75 million units, from 5,366 transactions. And that's the Stock Market Report. I'm Teniola Shiboeli. Thank you, Teniola. And European bourses closed Monday all in the red as investors look ahead to a likely hike in interest rates by the U.S. Federal Reserve. However, it's mixed closed for other major markets around the world. That's the business news for today. I am Kaya Day Okikyolu. Okay,